Simon, can you explain what damage was sustained to Lewis's car? Yes, um, there were two areas of damage sustained to the car in the incident. Um, one of them was the front wing and the other one was back here on the, the main part of the floor. So we lost um, a chunk of floor from here backwards, which we refer to as a hammerhead. Um, and it exposed part of the floor back to about here and we lost what we call the spleff, side pod leading edge flick, that stands for. Um, very similar to this one. And uh, the damage was uh, initially, parts of it were retained, so we had this bit was hanging down and rubbing on the ground, which caused a lot of sparks on television. You could see that. So do you think that's something that Lewis was feeling? Was he telling you that over the radio? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it was a bit of a moving target, so what he started reporting was that he'd had contact, that he had a problem, and then soon after that he started talking about the feeling of the car and he feels like he's lost aero from the rear of the car, aero balance. Um, he wasn't at that time talking about the front wing, but we'd picked up on that from television coverage. So you were able, through your data, you were able to see that aerodynamically the car was being affected? Yes, but it takes time. Um, so it, it's very easy to see in ideal circumstances if you're driving down the main straight and there's no traffic you can very quickly pick up on areas of the car that have sustained damage and are performing aerodynamically much more difficult when you're in traffic parts of the car are rubbing on the ground um, it, it, it's a very it's a very less well understood situation but we did we could certainly see we were losing performance. Can you put a figure on that? You know, what, what were the times that Lewis was losing out there? Per well, lap? that was the initial part of the job, is to try and assess how much we're losing, because obviously we can come in and do some work on the car, but we want to avoid that if at all possible, because it's going to drop us further back into traffic. So initially, within that first lap, we had to decide, are we stopping the car? Um, we start off on the assumption that we are stopping the car, so we assume that we have perhaps a puncture or that we have damage that we can replace. So we ex expect, we get the crew to expect that by the end of the lap we're going to bring the car in, we know what tyres we're going to fit and what strategy we're going to go to. From that point, we then start trying to work out, do we need to? What do we gain by doing that? So what's the damage on the car? Do we have a puncture? We rapidly concluded that we didn't have a puncture. The damage on the car was, as I say, these two areas, which is the floor and the front wing end plate. Of those two areas of damage, the only one we can address is the front wing. So we can replace a front wing in a pit stop. We know exactly what it costs. We did one at the end of last year and it was an eight second pit stop with the front wing replaced. Um, however, the floor is completely impractical. There's nothing we can do with the floor. <laughs> one moment, Lewis, we're just going to switch the car over. <laughs> exactly, that's a, that's a half hour job at least. So that area we, we, could, we knew we could do nothing about. We knew it was costing us performance. Um, and then we have to make a judgment call on how much of that performance do we get back from replacing only the front wing and is it worth doing. Um, by so the on, end, on lap times, how much was he losing per lap? So on lap times, again, it wasn't, wasn't an easy um, assessment to make because he had dropped back into traffic. So he was, we thought he was in big trouble. He actually seemed to be managing okay in the traffic he was in, but the lap times were certainly a second a lap slower than Nico. So Nico was pulling out a great lead. Um, Lewis was, wasn't, um, but we still thought at that time that the damage is maybe a second a lap. So if we thought we could fix all of that with a pit stop, you'd get it back. In the, you know, with the eight seconds you lose in the pit stop, you think this is an easy decision because we've got the whole race to go. However, most of that damage we know we can't get back by just changing the front wing. And so we decided to keep the car out for a few more laps to try and get a better handle on what, what it was we were losing and also for the aerodynamicist to get a better grip on what we might be able to see as the areas of damage and were they stable and how much performance were we losing. So these were all conversations you were having on the pit wall. Yep. How much of that were you able to tell Lewis? Almost nothing, really. That's not to say that uh, the regulations prevent it because we, are, we were then in an area where we're trying to contain a situation. We've got a car that's damaged, we're trying to get it to the end of the race, we're, trying to, we're allowed to box the car if we want to box the car. So the first thing we do is we, we listen to what Lewis is telling us and he offers all the right information. Um, the drivers are well, well versed that, that we need that information. So what does a car feel like to you? Because there might be damage we're not aware of. Um, for instance, if, if, the, if the suspension was damaged and the wheels are towing out or something, then, then that Lewis will feel that. We haven't really got anything on the car that's going to tell us that that's happened quickly. Um, so he gave us that information and we had a discussion with him about we're trying to decide what we're doing, but stay out um, and we'll give you a decision by the end of that. 
and then we, we kept him out. Um, lap on lap for that as, as we got a better idea of the, of the situation. Well you seem to grasp the situation and find a solution because he finished in third on the podium. Yeah. Um, how do you go forward now looking ahead to China? It was a one-off, it was a collision, we hope it won't happen again, that sort of uh, incident yep. out on track. But is there any way that you can reflect on it and prepare for things like that and what learnings? Really all we can do now for China is reflect on the process and, and was it effective? As you say, we finished third, that was great. Lewis did a great job of, of recovering the situation. Um, we did nearly box the car because we thought the damage was something, we thought maybe it was predominantly front wing. It wasn't, I think we made the right decision in the end, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't obvious at the time and we might have regretted it if we had boxed the car. There are also circumstances that could have played out in the race that we would have regretted having not boxed the car, you know, depending on the timings of safety cars or if parts of the floor had gone on to fail in a, a bigger way. But um, generally we were quite happy with the process and we review all of that after every race really, you know, even, even the ones which seem to go well and seem to be straightforward from television coverage. There's often quite a lot of conversation going on about whether we're doing the right thing and assessing those decisions. Well, fingers crossed, no more collisions out on track. A great job, Absolutely. a great uh, recovery from Thank Lewis and the team. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for talking us through it. Thank you.